Now this week, geopolitics will be playing out once again in the Great Hall of the United Nations in New York as world leaders gather for the annual General Assembly. The centerpiece of that great meeting is of course the general debate where world leaders get the chance to boast about their countries to other world leaders, but also weigh in on global issues, including the pandemic and climate change, but also security issues such as the Western withdrawal from Afghanistan and tensions between the US, Iran and its neighbors, as well as between the US and North Korea, and of course the growing rivalry between Washington and Beijing. And there'll also probably be some sharp words from China and France in the wake of that surprise deal to provide Australia with nuclear-powered submarines, which Beijing sees as antagonistic and Paris sees as undercutting its deal with Australia. Well, for more on this, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined now in the studio by the former Nigerian permanent representative to the United Nations Ambassador Humphrey Ojeko. Thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you, Charles. Very, very glad to have you here, and thank you for making out the time. Um, you worked at the UN for many, many years. I mean, you, you are the typical UN bureaucrat, and I don't mean that in a rude manner, <clears throat> but the UN sees this particular General Assembly as a potential pivot points. Do you agree that this one is critical? Indeed. Um, if it wasn't going to be critical, the fact of COVID-19 uh, has made it so. Uh, it was quite predictable that uh, there will be some uh, dissonance mm. in um, mm. global relations, both at the level of, especially at the level of multilateralism, when uh, COVID struck and new protocols had to be developed uh, all of a sudden. No previous plan, no arrangement, no vision of that coming. And then the world had to adjust quickly to be able to cope mm. with uh, what is going on. Uh, the question today is, has it coped? Or has uh, COVID exacerbated existing global issues? That, uh, and I think it has. Uh, that is why today um, the team of this uh, 76th session of the uh, UNGA is um, something about building resilience, building resilience through hope, you know, to recover from COVID-19, to rebuild sustainability, to respond to the needs of the planet, and to respect the rights of people and revitalize the United Nations itself. Because these past two years have been a serious trial on multilateralism in general, Absolutely. but the United Nations in particular. Uh, last year, the, the, the UN General Assembly was uh, held um, uh, virtually. virtually. Mm. And um, we have argued that virtual meetings uh, can be quite useful, but they can't be as effective as this first to first thing. That's Absolutely. why those who are complaining that um, this 76th um, session, which uh, various heads of state, over 100, maybe attending in person, may be a super spread of the COVID stuff, uh, is, a, is a valid uh, viewpoint. Mm. But again, it does not see the larger picture that there is need to begin to piece globalism together right now. So this meeting a lot hangs on it. And um, if, um, if care is taken, it may yet lead us in a new direction of uh, collaboration, global right. peace and collaboration. If it is not, we are going to be in great, greater difficulty than we are. Mm. Thanks for that uh, opening analysis. Uh, and I suppose what makes this particularly complicated is the joint challenge of both the pandemic, which you've clearly identified, and of course climate change. Um, the UN is trying to tie the two together, suggesting, as you mentioned in the theme, that an inclusive, sustainable and resilient recovery from COVID-19 is critical to getting the world on course towards the transition to climate action. Easier said than done? Indeed, to respond to the needs of, uh, of, the, of, the, of the earth, of this globe in which all of us um, 
uh, is a problem that didn't become very clear to even though we have had so many cops, so mm. many conferences, international. And there's conferences. another one coming up in another November. Another one is coming up very soon. The Paris Accord being probably the mm. crown of it all. It is doubtful that um, governments around the world took climate change as seriously as we ought to have. They ought to have until COVID has come to exacerbate things. Mm. Now, uh, every every part of the globe is affected is uh, fires that break out just randomly, is uh, super flooding, hurricanes, it's all sorts of uh, things are going on. And we can, even in Abuja here, that is in the Sahel region, mm. so to speak, there is flash floods in this, in this town of Abuja Absolutely. that is actually destroying property and taking lives. So the, the need to reset the earth is maybe a responsibility that all this this uh, UNG uh, 76 must take very seriously mm. and um, since the United States has uh, rejoined the Paris climate accord maybe there is hope that um, that, that could help mm. to um, uh, to galvanize uh, global interest and all of that however um, the, 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 poly the geopolitics and its uh, struggles, bilateral struggles, contests between nations at this time is also a serious challenge to realizing uh, that um, uh, consensus mm. the world needs at this time to seriously tackle climate change. Uh, because what is going on between China and the United States, on the one hand, you can it's, it's expand out to include the West. Mm. What is going on now between among the Western powers themselves, uh, Australia, mm. uh, France, the United States, the mutual suspicion is unthinkable that uh, the French ambassador in Washington will be recalled. Absolutely. And the French ambassador in, um, in, uh, in Canberra will be asked to come home for consultations. These are so called allies, and it goes to show that the national interest of nations as seen, perceived, and interpreted by the country is the foremost consideration Absolutely. in whatever is uh, agreed or discussed or whatever gains consensus at the multilateral level. That's a fascinating analysis there. And just returning to the first point you made, critical point, of course, which is um, the pandemic, I mean, for it to end, the issue of vaccine access must be solved with health experts repeatedly warning that the world will not move on from the coronavirus unless there is widespread global immunization. But of course, with wealthier nations stockpiling vaccines, implementing booster shots and the poorer countries facing vaccine shortages. I mean, it doesn't look like the pandemic will end anytime soon, does it? And that's a big issue for this UN General Assembly. In fact, it is a critical issue. And I can recall that our own um, Dr. Ngozi Okonjiwa, uh, during uh, the campaign for WTO Secretary Generalship, she was at the forefront of pushing this angle as early as that time, because it was clear to those who could think about it that to deal with a pandemic, you have to take um, a global approach. Um, uh, since the world has become smaller due to <laughs> instant communication, the movement mm. of persons and all of that, there is no way any country could easily isolate itself from um, uh, the dangers of COVID-19, even if your population is fully vac vaccinated. But again, the interplay of uh, domestic politics and um, international relations comes to the front mm. again so that countries that are in a position to orchestrate and lead the global vaccination project are concentrating first in their own countries and, and giving tokenisms to. But again, it, it reminds us of the old argument that those nations that continue to depend on others, particularly in the African That's continent. That's a very important yes. point. That 
when when COVID nineteen pandemic became an issue, mm. the world was like in a state of frenzy. Every country was struggling to help itself. This is like every country for itself. Mm. Initially, that's what it is. But um, I don't think that if, if Africa as a continent had pulled its own resources, both scientific, technological, and medical knowledge and all of that, that we couldn't have developed an African vaccine. So that is it, like Cuba. When Cuba, and tiny Cuba, countries like, like Cuba, Cuba are doing it. Exactly. Yeah. You know, China was one of the first countries mm. to come out with something. And we say we have collaboration with these, uh, with these other bigger countries. Does the collaboration not include, you know, cooperation in Absolutely. science, research, and all of that? Especially in a crisis Especially situation. Especially in a crisis situation. Yeah. So that is, um, that is one place. We may blame countries for concentrating... Uh, effort in their own countries, mm. but again, that's natural. So why did we not also try to develop some African vaccine for our own people? Absolutely yeah. crucial point. So the fact, of course, is that they didn't develop it. Didn't. We are it still in the throes of the pandemic. Um, so based on what's happened, your experience with previous general assemblies, do you hold out much hope that they'll be able to come up with the right solutions and will implement those solutions this time? Uh, you know, Charles, that um, th th there's a, a huge gap between the rhetorics of, uh, of any international organization and the actual practice, actual practice. What, what you implement, at the end of the day, boils down to what that country yes. is able to muster up itself. So this tendency, this, this proclivity to depend on others is, 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 a, is, a, is a lack Africa must fill up. It's okay. a void we Let must fill up. Please stay with us. It's yes. brilliant talking with you. You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat about this week's United Nations General Assembly taking place in New York. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Enyugulu. So after last year's virtual UN General Assembly, this year, uh, in spite of the lingering coronavirus, the world's leaders and diplomats are back in person. And New York will once again face the dreaded massive gridlock of diplomatic motorcades as world leaders, including Nigeria's President Mohamedou Buhari and dozens of others, along with their entourages, descend on the UN's headquarters in Manhattan. There's lots to talk about, but the main deliberations will focus on two parallel challenges, ending the pandemic and redefining the post-pandemic global economy so that it embraces climate action. But can the choices they make secure the world's human, economic and environmental health, or will this be another talking shop that reinforces old patterns? And Nigeria's former permanent representative at the United Nations, Ambassador Humphrey Ojeko, is still with me in the studio. Thank you very much indeed for staying with us. And uh, previously, you talked about um, starting, of course, with the General Assembly itself and the general debate, which takes place on Tuesday. Um, you talked about more than 100 leaders coming in person, despite a letter from the U.S. encouraging member states to do it virtually. And as you said, we're looking at a potential super spreader event. And to further complicate matters, New York City authorities require proof of COVID-19 vaccination for all indoor gatherings. And they've asked the UN to follow this rule. I mean, what is your sense of how that's going to pan out? It, it looks to me like um, the, 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 the 76th Assembly gathering this number of heads of state again was not probably very well considered uh, because um, the, 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 the rate of deaths, mm. the rate of hospitalizations in, 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 in the West where a lot of vaccination has taken place is still quite high. And then in the African continent, for instance, where we do not really think we have uh, figures we could rely on. Yes, we see things that are published every day, but nobody can put his finger on the mm. correct uh, 
uh, it is it's, 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 it should have been um, uh, probably continue with the virtual meetings until this thing has a handle. Yeah, but, but give, to yeah. give it a handle, sure. and this is the other side of the argument, to give it a handle, eyeball to eyeball diplomacy is very important. Absolutely. It's very important. So uh, it is uh, easy to There's got to be a middle course. Yes, there has to be a middle course. The, the New York State government has laid out protocols for mm. engagement. It should be obeyed. Right. Uh, so is the United States government as well. And um, uh, it's for everybody's safety, I think mm. we should. Um, but of course, given that the delegates have not so far been entirely cooperative, I mean, how do you reckon it's all going to work? I mean, because this is obviously internal politics as well. And, you know, people, um, different heads of state, Brazil <coughs> and Russia have already rejected that health requirement with Brazil's President Jair Bolsonaro saying without equivocation that he won't get vaccinated. And, and they're actually saying, OK, even if you arrive without being vaccinated, we've got vaccination centers mm -hmm. outside the UN. Once you come in, go there, you'll get vaccinated before you come in. Well, the, the thing with uh, diplomacy and sovereignty is um, I don't think there is any law yet mm. in the international legislative books that would compel a head of state to bear the, obey the rules. Well, the UN uh, Secretary General made that clear, didn't he? <laughs> he surely did. Yeah. Uh, so at the end of the day, it's, it's, that's where persuasion, consultations prior to the conference mm. usually takes place and sorts this, these things out. Uh, I don't think we have that luxury anymore of the UN sending out fillers to various governments, mm. heads of state, and persuading everyone that this is the protocol for this uh, session and everybody should try to obey it. Uh, that said, the internal politics of the United States itself in, with regards to vaccines, mm. you know, does not encourage even those who are coming That's from outside. That's a very good point. Say, if, if a lot if, of vaccine if, hesitancy. Exactly. There. There's so much hesitance in your own country. Uh, why should you force us mm. to? You haven't been able to mandate, to enforce the mandate, to get your own people mm. to, to... But of course, the, 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 uh, the American argument would be that, you know, you, you've also got city ordinances, city rules, state sure. rules, and mm -hmm. so on, and this mm -hmm. is New York's authority. But let's move away from COVID. Sure. Um, everyone, of course, I mean, there are a lot of other issues to be discussed, um, global issues. Everyone listening closely to the, or will be listening to the Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi's speech um, amid the stalled nuclear talks. You know, it is, uh, it's a bit strange mm. to, to make this observation that um, President Biden came to office uh, promising to reverse much of uh, his predecessor, President Trump's uh, foreign policy uh, vision mm. and mission and destination. Again, th that gap between theory and practice, those promises, other than the Paris uh, Climate uh, Accord, which he has, um, the United States has rejoined, all, the, all that, all that uh, talk about um, restarting the, the Iran nuclear mm. uh, accord and America rejoining the team and all of that is still being stalled. Nothing mm. has happened. Uh, you, you take that to so many other issues in the climate area, in the reinvigoration of uh, the U.S. alliances and all of that. Nothing has really changed. In mm. fact, you see a, a kind of reinforcing if you take a look at what's happening in the immigration area, you see a reinforcing of uh, of a Trump, um, uh, Trump Absolutely. era, you know, Laws. foreign policy yeah. initiatives, yeah. and uh, uh, even what is happening with uh, repatriation of uh, some people from the uh, the coast of uh, um, uh, Texas today mm. is based on a uh, uh, yes on, on, on a, uh, a Trump era mm. uh, uh, law Absolutely. presidential order, which wasn't. Those are things you people expected mm. that by now America would have overcome them. The debacle that uh, withdrawing from uh, Afghanistan uh, seems to have resulted into was also just a letter by letter follow up mm. of the of a Trump negotiation without making any 
uh, adjustments uh, to to uh, take care of the humanitarian aspects mm. of uh, I think that that's a know. very crucial mm. observation on several fronts that you've several made fronts, there. Yes. And, and of course, um, the other thing you touched on earlier um, was the, the depth of anger emanating from Paris over that cancelled submarine deal between France and Australia and China's equally furious response at the security pact designed to contain it. Does it look like this year's General Assembly will be a pretty disputatious affair? Uh, but I, I, can say, I can say quite comfortably that um, expecting a, a consensual approach to problem solving mm. from China, the United States, uh, the European Union, with uh, the French government talking of uh, uh, its principal ally stabbing it in the back, recalling its ambassador from Washington, D.C., um, breaking a long, almost a century-old uh, relationship with uh, Australia, mm. um, uh, its activities in the in the in the South China Sea area and all of that, those are fundamental national interest issues. And in my experience, and the twain shall never meet. Exactly. <laughs> in my experience, when there seems to be a clash between the fundamental national interest, which is what America has displayed, mm. its new fears about the South China Sea, the activities of China maybe it's uh, strategic uh, thinking of uh, taking over and controlling the entire place the resistance of the united states that is his fundamental national interest mm. uh, i suppose so it didn't matter if it had to throw an ally a very close and important right. ally under the uh, boss <laughs> in order to have his way i tell you that so, that's a that's a fascinating yeah. analysis <laughs>